And this is a little bigger crowd than I had originally uh, mentioned to you, but if you are still welcome, interested in coming up and just telling a little bit about Seven Hills, about yourself, your future, your dreams, and what makes Seven Hills uh, special for you, what stands out to you that you'd like the community to know all about. Anyone? Aphrodita, would you like to kick us off? <laughs> If you have not asked me ahead of time if you could speak, but you would still like to, we will have an open mic. Um, hi, I'm Dr. Fida, and I'm a student. I'm an eighth grade student here at Seven Hills, and Seven Hills has helped me a lot with accomplishing the goals I've had in life. A lot of things that I wanted to do in my future, I see coming closer to me and becoming more reachable to my own arm extent. I think a lot of the teachers here are so helpful with like the guidelines that I needed to accomplish most of the goals I am facing right now. And a lot of the traumatic events that's happened in my life, they've been here to help me throughout all of that. And one thing that's really important to me about this school is that us, at, we're all a union. Like all the students here have been there to support. We have a lot of organizations that we're working with, like Be Like Brit, and we do a community harvest project. And as a school, as RJ Junior Academy, we all come as one and we to help those people that we all agreed on helping those people as we wanted to take that responsibility and we wanted to take it into our own hands to make sure that we had some kind of impact on our community the way we wanted the community to help us back. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> a lot of the things that we do, we get back from there and we feel the accomplishment, we feel the great feeling <laughs> of helping those people and a lot of the stuff that we do has been so nice giving back to us and helped us become the people that we are. Thank you. everything for me because when I came in kindergarten I thought that it would be hard but it really wasn't because the teachers are so kind and now that I'm in eighth grade I have grown a bond with my teachers and now that I have they motivate us to do good in life they um, they offer us things that other schools can't offer us like it's very um, <laughs> it's hard to explain <laughs> but um, but yeah, Seven Hills is a really good school, and if I had anyone that was struggling and that didn't have, like, it, it's, Seven Hills teaches you how to be a wonderful person when you grow up. The thing that I love that they put in the school is that now that we have college and career beyond, because that's also a good program because they, they inspire us to do good in life. They help us, they help me achieve the goals that I couldn't achieve that I thought. Like, as Dr. Dita said, like trauma, I've been through trauma too. It really, they really are there for you. Like the teachers, as known as Ms. Bryan, she helps, she helps us, she motivates us. Ms. Piazza, she does a wonderful job in struck, like instructing the teachers on how to teach us. And Ms. Bright, she's a wonderful head of school and she provides us what we need. And I'm very grateful for Ms. Bright, Ms. Piazza, Ms. Bryan, and also Mr. Lee. He does a great organization for the high schools. And um, yeah, eighth grade is also wonderful as well. The teachers, they help us a lot. They make sure we do good in class. We get all our work turned in. And yeah. When I initially asked if students wanted to speak, they thought they were only speaking to the adults and that the students would be dismissed and back to class. So it's a little more intimidating to speak in front of your peers than it is the grown-ups. So thank you for stepping up and uh, people who didn't even volunteer are volunteering now and I hope we'll have some more. 
Ashley mentioned college and career and beyond being a focus of the school. Are there any students who can talk a little bit more about that and about college week and what that looks like? Adina, was that your hand in the air? I think I saw it. Come on up here. <laughs> at Seven Hills. Um, we do a lot of things that help us to, um, they do a lot of things to inspire us to go to college. Like one week uh, at the beginning of the year, we go to a college. Like this year, we went to Holy Cross. The year before, we went to um, Assumption College. We went to different colleges to inspire us to go to college and to stay in school. Um, college careers and beyond is a good program because we have scholarships that help you get into high school and college and we have um, somebody to guide us to go into college like Mr. Lee. He helps us go into high school and college and guides us to the right path. and Ashley was that about Seven Hills is not just about the academics but it's about being the best person that you can be, being connected to your community and thinking about the core values that help you not just at Seven Hills but throughout life. Is there anyone who could come up and just talk a little bit about the core values? Jared, come on up. My name is Jared, I'm an eighth grader. I feel that through the years, Seven Hills has helped me mature and be a better person. And the teachers here are amazing. They they teach you in a way that other teachers at other schools couldn't. Like I asked my friends out of school if they teach them that way, and they don't. And it works. <laughs> and I'm proud to be going to the school, and that I'm graduating from the school.
people in real life who have exemplified those qualities and how that has led to changing the world in positive ways. We also identify fictional characters in text and how they exemplify those qualities. And then we, like Horton, here's a little bit, what quality is he representing? Um, but it's something that we try and infuse in every conversation throughout every subject area. Um, and apparently Horton represents integrity. Thank you. Um, but we do try and infuse it throughout everything that we do. When we talk about college, career, and beyond as our model, we do want to prepare students to reach high, set good, set amazing goals for themselves and then go after them and achieve them, both in terms of their college education, in terms of the career that they choose that they think will impact the world in a positive way. And beyond to us means that education is not just about school. Education is about personal and interpersonal development. And so what can you take away that's going to give you a better quality of life forever? So it's not just the core values, but it's also being exposed to as much as we can because you don't know what you like and don't like. You don't know what you're good at unless you try, unless you see what's out there and you get to try different things. So if you have an appreciation for music, that's going to enrich your life in so many different ways beyond just what you learn in school. And so we want students to experience as much as we can, find those things they're passionate about, and go after them. Are there any students who would like to speak about extracurricular activities where they found those things that are special to them and motivate them? Serenity, come on up. activities that I have found interesting that I've done since kindergarten or show choir in the play because I'm really interested in music and theatrics. You can ask anyone. I'm always talking. I'm always <laughs> out there. I want to speak up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can ask my teachers too. <laughs> um, so about the play, I've been doing the plays every year and they're really good. You, it's from second grade to eighth grade I think. And then we do like a bunch of musicals. Last year was Peter Pan. Uh, it was, there was a big audience, it was really great. It gives you a chance to like open up and you know get out of your zone, your comfort zone. And it's really fun. And if you're interested in music too, you can do show choir. That is second through fifth grade, I believe. But I'm an assistant, so I'm still in show choir. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyways, and yeah. That's show choir and theater. I was forced to, just, just being real. Um, so, I'm the type of person who wants to like try everything. Like, I, I can't stay in one place all the time. So, in kindergarten, I saw my brother like go and show choir, and I'm like, oh, I want to do that too. And I was a good singer, so, yeah. So, I, in first grade, I kept on asking Miss Holton, oh, can I go to show choir, can I go to show choir? And then she's like, well, there's too many people in it right now, I think. Yeah, so, yeah. So, but by second grade, she let me go into show choir. And then, since, I've been in the play, but I stopped when I was in fifth grade. Because, yeah, I didn't get those big parts. So, yeah, you know. <laughs> so, and I went to stomp last year. Yeah, and I did it. It was, it was fun, it was. But I'm not that good of a dancer, so, oh well. And yeah, I got kicked out because <laughs> I got kicked out because I was I was sick on the competition day. So and I I honestly didn't really want to do it anymore. So yeah, but extracurricular the extracurricular like activities are really fun and 
Like sometimes when you don't want to go home, you know, watch TV all the time, you can go and do activities and it can help you in your future. So, yes. When you like do good, there's like these points that give us scholarships. Um, and to raise those scholarships, um, I was on an eBay team. Like we um, we packaged um, things like items and we sold them on eBay to get more money for scholarships and stuff like that. Yeah. anything in her entire life. We are very glad to have her here. And actually, Janetta, Ashley came over with a special request for a song from you. <laughs> um, one of the things Mr. Frazier talked about was collecting the happy dollars and the entrance fee today to help establish a digital library here at Seven Hills. And I just wanted some students to talk about why is reading important? Why is it important to have books in your classroom that you can read besides just textbooks? What does that look like? How are they used in class? Why is that important here at Seven Hills? Who could come up and speak to that? I see your hand, Jared, and I'm not ignoring you. I'm just going to see if anyone else wants a turn. Come on, <laughs> Teaching point. It's about 15 to 20 minutes to start the lesson. 
At that time, then, students go to their book bins where they've pre-selected books that are at their level that are of interest to them, and they read independently, trying to apply the thinking skill that the teacher modeled during the mini-lesson that started out class. So then they're reading independently in a text that they've chosen, that they are interested in. We found the more invested they are in the text that they're reading, the more likely they are to develop habits of lifelong reading. And the teacher will go around the room and conference with them. So students who are not being conferenced with are reading independently and they're using sticky notes to do what we call stop and jot, where they're tracking their thinking throughout the text to pull out the important information or pull out the information that is meaningful to them and why that was meaningful to them. And then the teacher will come around and conference with the student about the reading that they're doing. You're going to visit classrooms following this. I'm not sure how many will be doing reading workshops during this particular time. Um, but if you do go into a classroom and all the students are at their seats reading independently, you are more than welcome to sidle up next to one, just choose a student and just ask them to tell you about their book. You're welcome to ask them why they chose that book, um, what's most important about the story or meaningful to them. Um, you're welcome to conference with students as you visit the classrooms. After students read independently, they come back together at the end of the class, sometimes for a sharing time, where they talk about when they saw evidence in the text they were reading about the thinking point that the teacher modeled. Other times, they'll have a whole class conversation where the teacher tries to exit from the conversation and encourage students to have dialogue across the circle with one another about the text that they're reading. Sometimes you'll also see what's called a read-along, uh, where all the students are reading the same text um, with the teacher and they're having more of a book club in the room. So there's a variation of what you'll see in the classrooms at different times. Try and balance out between shared experiences and more personalized experiences. So that's why we really want the kids to have access to a lot of choice in their literature and high quality and highly engaging text for them to choose from. Would you like to do that? No, thank you. Would anybody like to? <laughs> Natalina, come on up. <laughs> um, okay, so we have four different color teams. There's green, black, purple, and red. Um, I myself is a black team leader, along with three other students. <laughs> Um, so the color teams are basically of merits and demerits. Um, merits are for good behavior, demerits are for bad. Um, sort of like a friendly competition. So at the end of the month, the color team that has the most merits or has a better total points, they get, um, a celebration. They could go to Sky Zone, they could have a breakfast, they could do many different things. Um, but the other three teams, they continue and with their regular classrooms. So we have different teachers as um, captains. So there's leaders and captains. The leaders are the students and the captains are the teachers. And there's two captains to every team, and I think there's different amounts of leaders. Oh, there's three, three teachers. Um, and Natalina, you have team meetings this afternoon at three o'clock, right? No. Oh, it's not today. Okay, well, can you tell what is it? What do you do at your team meetings? What? Is, why is it important? Um, our team meetings are important. It. Um, because sometimes when you're in a team, you have to talk to them, make sure that you're doing um, well, see how it's going. Um, and at the team meetings, we talk about how you could get more merits, less demerits. Um, sometimes all teams come together to do junior academy events. Um, black team hosts a lot of events, like Blue Pinky Campaign, and, and a day of no speaking. What is that? <coughs> what is the Blue Pinky Campaign? The Blue Pinky Campaign is 
basically like a pinky promise to be kind to your peers and to basically everyone. And what is a day of no speaking? Ooh, um, <laughs> a day of no speaking, basically, um, Us and that we're all gonna be as one and do it all for ourselves and for our peers and stuff that can't stick up from themselves. We're gonna do it for them by taking like a day of silence and then you know kind of representing how they can't. They're not always gonna be comfortable about themselves, but we're gonna make sure that they're still welcome here and still are able to be in our environment. Um, and also, um, the black team colors, they are black and pink. Black is for Blackout Bullying Day. There's also a dress down for all students to wear all black. And pink is, we, have, we also have um, pink shirt day. And that's because there was a student at another school that was wearing pink. He was a male, and he was wearing pink, and he got bullied because of it. So. Pink shirt day is basically for everybody, females, males, anybody, to wear pink shirts to show you shouldn't get bullied for the way you dress or who you like, how you live your life, your culture, your nationality, anything like that. Was there anyone who didn't have a chance to be heard who wanted to? Ayana, did you have something important to share? <laughs> and then this will be the last, oh, Supreme, you know what, you'll have to fill me in, honey. We'll give you a chance. This will be the last one, and then we are going to invite our guests to visit classrooms. Okay. So, Ms. Piazza said something about how this, this school isn't about just education, but about just being one and making other people feel happy. Well, as Natalina was saying in our group meeting, one of our leaders, Ms. Bryan, she mentioned about a book, about a bucket, and that if you fill somebody's bucket is how, I mean, if you make people happy and feel good, you get to fill his bucket or whoever you're making somebody feel happy. And um, yeah, basically our school fills people's buckets. <laughs> people's buckets. And our hope is that we can fill the buckets of every child that comes here with knowledge, with our core values, and with grit. That's something we talk a lot about at Seven Hills. Digging in and never giving up. And our hope is that we can fill all of your buckets with that, and then you'll go out into the community, into the world, and fill other people's buckets too. And we can lift everyone around us. So please don't be embarrassed. You should be really proud that that was a perfect way to end our lunch meeting today. So thank you.